manhood as fatherhood. I don't think a man fulfills his manhood in any way more profound than through the role, function and responsibility of being a father. Now formally carrying that title, I am meditating on the extent to which manhood is often defined by external trappings. The term provider is misleading and extremely restrictive in the way it is commonly used. It focuses on the capacity to accumulate material things that you give or pass on to children. My meditation is leading me to see provider as a nurturing and cultivating attribute. One that focuses on developing the internal character necessary to give my son what he needs. I am concerned with material, but not before principles and values. In other words, I must provide my son an example through how he sees me act. I must provide balance and harmony ma'at so that he may develop balanced and harmonious character iwapele i must provide knowledge and wisdom so that he may gain understanding jehuti through how i relate to his mother i must provide a positive complementary reflection so that he learns how he must relate to his sisters and be related to by them i must build and provide him something to build on I must provide for him the spiritual, mental and physical tools for him to play his part in the overthrow of European imperialism and the liberation of African people. My son must be a warrior, therefore I must provide for him a general, a field marshal. It seems to me that the function of father needs to play a greater role in how black manhood is defined in general. This is the missing link, the essential component for developing new paradigms and manifestations of black manhood. It occurs to me that the wisdom of our ancestors is profound. The new paradigms are actually old. Sankofa, a man was and is a man based upon his connection to family. A man's status was intricately tied to his role and function as a father and a husband. Everything else is an extension of this central principle and revolves around this axis. I am humbled by this myths. Kudzai muzimu mokuru, tendai muari, ashe. Tendai muari family, peace, blessings and welcome to the third installment of the new Black Daddy Diary. Uh, totally enjoying this process. I didn't think I'd be doing it, um, but I thank those who have encouraged me to go down this road uh, and are encouraging me to continue going down this road. Uh, once again, we always, you know, kind of love and appreciate and welcome your reflections into what is being said, your thoughts, your feelings. Um, and, you know, I'm seeing a lot of important discourse and dialogue being created. So I give thanks for being a part of that. Um, it's, you know, really appreciated. Um, I haven't been through something like this properly since um, October, November, when I was being initiated into um, the Sima Kemet Yoga system as an instructor um, of Sima Kemet Yoga. I'm a, I am an instructor of Sima Kemet Yoga, for those who may not be aware. Um, and yeah, throughout that process, we had to keep um, daily reflections. Uh, and so that was a, a positive process. And before that, it was really going through my rites of passage, yeah, that I was really um, deeply engaged. We had to keep what was called a PDR, a personal development record. And so going through that process, um, you know, um, throughout my teens, um, I know the power of being able to, you know, document your thoughts and reflect upon them, coming back to them and them kind of things. Yeah, it's not something that I do enough in my life. Um, but obviously being a father... Now, you know, there's, obviously there's not a more um, life changing that you can go through. And so I've, I've been prompted to do this at this particular stage of life. And I, and, I, and I give thanks. So getting into today's reflection, this is day three. Yeah. And I was writing something practically every day at this point. Um, but yeah, day three, um, fatherhood as manhood or manhood as fatherhood, depending on how you want to say it, it really don't matter. This was my reflection. This, this was deep because um, this is now... Obviously not for the first time, but me really going into the kind of father that I want to be. And that's primary. That is most important. Um, and I was looking at it in the sense of how the role that a father, being a father, plays in the type of men we become. Yeah? 
as I started it off, I don't think a man fulfills his manhood in any way more profound than through the role, function, and responsibility of being a father. Yeah? And that's because manhood, adulthood, is all about responsibility. Take your responsibility for oneself, yeah, um, and how one projects the self in the world, yes? And it goes on another level where you are not only responsible for yourself, but also responsible for the development of a life which you have contributed to bringing into this world, yeah? And that's a very profound ideal. You have created this life and now you must be responsible for nurturing and cultivating this life. So now I'm thinking about that now in respect of the, what I consider to be the number one concept, word, phrase, idea associated with fatherhood. And that is the term provider. To be, to be clear, absolutely clear, I am not diminishing the importance of the role of a, of a provider. I am not diminishing the importance of a father being a provider in a child's life. What I am saying is that how the term is usually applied, popularly applied to me, is very restrictive. Yeah, very restrictive. Um, it doesn't take into consideration so much of what I think a father needs to be. Why? Because it's generally focused on the material, yeah? Um, so essential is food, clothing, and shelter, yeah? And then wants, yeah? And other needs, all right? Um, usually material, yeah? And so, um, cause a couple of examples of what I'm saying, and I gave these examples in the, in the discussion that followed after I shared this uh, on Facebook because I was challenged um, a, a certain way. Um, and it's like, you know, I, I, I have a great disdain, yeah, for, for, for fathers who almost exclusively speak about their children in relation to child support, yeah? And I come across these kinds of dynamics, yeah? When you talk about, you know, taking care of their children, they're telling you about how much they, money they pay to their mum, yeah, uh, every month. And this is obviously for men who are not in relationships uh, with the mothers of their children, yeah? And then... There is also the fact that even if you're providing materially for the children, it doesn't mean that you're leaving them anything economically uh, for them to build upon as a foundation for them to build from and build upon. And I think those two things are very important. As I said, I'm looking at this thing now in terms of cultivating and nurturing. Yeah, cultivating and nurturing. And I use those words because in cultivating and nurturing children, it means that we have to develop certain characteristics, yeah, a certain skill set in order to achieve that job. The term provider, as it is normally applied, in my humble opinion, only means that you must be financially stable, yeah. It doesn't have a direct impact upon the kinds of men we become, yeah. And that's what I'm looking at at the moment. So, I must provide my son an example of manhood, yeah, um, that he can follow, all right? I have to be there. He has to see me functioning as a man, yeah, for him to get his primary, his first understanding of what it means to be a man. Um, and that is particularly important in this day and age because there are so many destructive ideals out there of what men are and what men should be and what men are supposed to be, yeah? destructive ideas they don't produce anything other than destruction um particularly important because there are many ideals and philosophies out there right about now that pretend to be correcting those destructive ideas of manhood but actually promote more destructive ideals of manhood and so i want to be my son's counterbalance yeah to those things yeah i want to provide for him the counter example to all these destructive ideals out there yeah, I gave that example in what I wrote. The other one was in terms of how I relate to his mother. Yeah, very important that um, I provide an example for him through how I relate to his mother uh, regarding how he is supposed to relate to the women that are around him, the women that he will come across. Yes, um, and, and these things um, through how I relate to his big sister. Yeah, I must provide um, that example. Um, one of the most destructive uh, ideas and ideals about black manhood 
is in relation to how we relate to women. All right. Uh, and so he must learn the kinds of characteristics, the kind of character he must develop um, in order to relate to women in constructive and productive ways. And furthermore from that, because reciprocity is important, he must also learn the kinds, what, what must re be reciprocated from the women that he's related to, yeah? This is important for me because growing up uh, and having the ideas and the ideals because I was taught about from the men around me about these destructive ideas and not manifesting them, yeah? Um, and one of the things that, one of the byproducts of kind of this social construct is the idea that we get that women are kind of, naturally predisposed towards relationships yeah and men are not and so when you go through into relationships that as a young man it can put you in a bit of a situation because um you're not appreciating that sometimes people in general man woman picnic can act in dysfunctional ways yeah and so you learn that through the experience um, of being in relationships and so um my son must learn and know what should be the kinds of appropriate reciprocation yeah for what he is projecting towards the sisters that are around him. And I hope you see where I'm going with this, that there's a, there are certain characteristics that I must develop, yeah, that go beyond just being able to give him things in order to be that kind of father. It directly affects the kind of man that you become. So then that got me thinking about the extent to which we as men, growing up, desire to be fathers. Yeah, they say that women develop the maternal instinct from young. Yeah. Um, and others celebrate the fact, others bemoan the fact that women are, you know, socialized in a way whereby being a mother and a wife is primary. And if you don't achieve those things in life, then, you know, you failed in fundamental aspects of your life. And they bemoan the fact, those people bemoan that fact, bemoan it based upon the fact that men are not socialized in the same way. Right. And I'm thinking about this thing. I'm thinking, saying, yo, to what extent? do we develop a paternal instinct as men from young? The desire, the aspiration to become a father. Yeah? And how does that aspiration or lack of aspiration affect the kinds of men that we become? Yeah? So based upon everything that I've just said, yeah, looking at being a father um, and what it means and what you have to provide. If you're conscious of that as a young man and developing your character, your self-development around that, yeah, then you it's a different kind of man you're becoming. Yeah? Different kind of man you're becoming. So I thought about this and I'm saying, yo, in indigenous cultures, particularly looking at African culture because I'm an African-centered man, yeah, men are cultivated to be fathers yeah and so in developing on this now reflecting on what i wrote before i picked up this book yeah called facing mount kenya um by Jomo kenyatta he is the former president yeah of uh kenya all right independent kenya um and politics aside <laughs> you know the I mean? politics aside um this book does give a very good explanation about Kikuyu uh, culture, tradition, um, uh, it goes through initiation rites, procreation, marital processes, relationships between elders and young people. There's a lot we can learn uh, about um, our Kikuyu tradition from this book. So I'm going to read sections of it from the chapter on the marriage system, yeah, um, to explain what I'm talking about right here. All right. He says, in the Kikuyu community, Marriage and its obligations occupy a position of great importance. One of the outstanding features in the Kikuyu system of marriage is the desire of every member of the tribe to build up his own family group and by this means to extend and prolong his father's mbali. Mbali means clan. This results in the strengthening of the tribe as a whole. So, what we're getting from that already is the fact that there's, or, there, there's already a responsibility that marriage has beyond just the individuals, yeah? You know what I'm saying? It's not just about I love her and one and there we go. You know what I mean? The, marriage has a responsibility and a role and a function in the context of 
they could call you nation. And we use nation uh, instead of the word tribe because we understand the implications of the word tribe in European culture. We're not going to go into that kind of time, but you know what I mean? So you go. He goes on, on signing the matrimonial contract, the marriage ceases to be merely a personal matter. For the contract buys not only the bride and bridegroom, but also their kinfolk. It becomes a duty to produce children and sexual intercourse between a man and his wife or wives is looked upon as an act of production and not merely as the gratification of bodily desires. The desire to have children, listen to this part now, the desire to have children is deep rooted in the heart of both man and woman. And on entering into matrimonial union, they regard the procreation of children as their first and most sacred duty. In Kikuyu society, the rearing of a family brings with it a rise in social status, the social position of a married man and woman who have children is of greater importance and dignity than that of a bachelor or spinster. After the birth of the first child, the married pair become the object of higher regard on the part of their fellows than they were before. Mm. Yeah, so I wanted to read that for the context of it, yeah, but also to highlight this idea of the desire to have children being deeply rooted, yeah, in the hearts of both the male children and the female children, yeah, in the context of the role that it plays, the function that it plays in the betterment of the nation as a whole, yeah. So it seems that our ancestors um, had that, particular concept on luck but not only that status greater status is applied to men becoming husbands and fathers popular wisdom yeah would suggest that we have it the opposite way around in this society that status is applied to the extent to which a man can remain young, free, and single, yeah? Those concepts are associated with each other. Young, free, and single. Freedom is associated with being single, yes? And both of those things are associated with youth, yes? And this doesn't mean that, they, that because they, in another chapter in this book, they go into the sexual socialization of the young men and women, yeah? And before a certain point, they 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 uh, they are allowed yeah to relate rather freely all right um but they understand that that's a process in their development yeah more status like it says um is applied to being a husband than there is to being a bachelor so there is this no thing of being a, perpe a perpetual bachelor uh, into whatever age um you know and conquering as much women as possible the, the that would be considered an infantile characteristic yeah that a man becoming a man and being a man and maturing as a man is very much tied to your capacity to be a husband and to be a father. Yeah? So it looks like our ancestors had this thing on lock, fam. Yeah? Um, and again, I said status, you know. All right? So that means your importance. Yeah? Your social importance heightens upon these ideals. I don't know. And you lot can tell me if you think I'm chatting for this. I don't know if we grow in a society and a community right this minute now that cultivates men with that ideal where we are, we achieve greater status yeah, socially by becoming fathers and husbands. I'm thinking now in the mind of another book by the name of Of Water and the Spirit, yeah? Uh, by Malidoma Somme. And the book is a very, it's autobiograph autobiographical. It speaks to um, this brother who was kidnapped yeah, from his, his village. Um, he is of the Dagara people uh, in Burkina Faso. And he was kidnapped and raised in this kind of uh, uh, missionary school, yeah, Catholic missionary school. Uh, and he eventually escapes that experience, traumatic experience, uh, f finds his, his community, his village, and has to go through the process of being reintegrated into um, that nation, the Dagara people. 
And one of the things that he has to go through is the manhood initiation rites, yeah, the rites of passage, yeah. Um, and he's a bit older than those he, he, who he goes through it with, um, but he has to go through it. And as a part of the process, one of the things that his father says to him is, he's asking his father what's, what's going to take place, yeah. And his father tells him that he can't inform him, yeah, as to what he's going to go through because informing him would be a form of protection. And if he protects him from the experience, he will be denying him the lessons that he's going to learn by going through that experience, yeah? I'm highlighting that because that father knew what his responsibility was at that particular moment in time, yeah? He knew what his son was about to go through because he himself had been through it and he knew that he had to let go and allow his son to go through that experience. He knew what his role and function of being a father was. And by doing that, he was actually cultivating and developing him in a certain particular way. But then another example in the book, yeah? When Malada Masame returns and he finds his family again, um, he obviously has a lot of issues reintegrating himself into not just the actual community as, as a whole, but the family. And so because of his experience in his Catholic missionary school, he has a lot of unresolved issues with his family and they primarily manifest through his relationship with his father. Yes. And so what happens is the, uh, the Gara family structure, yeah, has various paternal influences. And one of them uh, is the maternal uncle. Yeah. The maternal uncle who he describes in the book as the male mother. Yes. And his responsibility is because of the fact that Malidoma Somme's uh, issues with his father manifest themselves primarily in his anger. He is very quick to anger. Yeah. Um, the maternal uncle, the male mother, his responsibility was to ensure that he's going through a therapeutic process here yeah, of being able to quell his anger, understand his emotions, so that he's be able to resolve the issues, go beyond his anger to be able to resolve the issues that he has with his father. And so what he, how he describes it is that it's a nurturing kind of relationship whereby um, it's the feminine, bringing out the feminine in the masculine, the nurturing, cultivating yeah, vibration once again. That's deep to me, fam. That's science. Right there, yeah? Now, this is the uncle, you know, but he's called the male mother, which means that he has a parental responsibility. Again, um, men being cultivated in a way that teaches them to be parents, to be fathers, yeah? They, you grow knowing you're going to have these responsibilities, yeah, uh, within the culture. And so, having gone meditating on all this, you know, um, I'm just saying that our ancestors had a thing on luck. Yeah, our ancestors had the thing on lock. And for me, if we want to create better kinds of men or we want to become better kinds of men, one of the major ways that we can do that is through deciding and looking at the kinds of fathers that we want to be and the kinds of men we would need to be in order to be the kind of father that we want to be. So I end the reflection off by saying kudzai muzim mukuru as again shona yeah kudzai muzim kudzai muzim mukuru means give praises unto our great ancestors kudzai is praises uh muzimu is ancestors mukuru is great kudzai muzim mukuru uh tendamwari i explained in the first reflection you have to watch that if you want to break down of that uh, and then ashe ashe now is not shona ashe is yoruba and ashe um, is life force energy, yes? Literally, the life force energy that flows through all things. But also, uh, in prayer and ritual, ashe um, is a word that denotes the bringing forth, yeah? The bringing into existence and manifestation, the will of the self collectively and individually. So ashe um, could loosely translate as let it be done, uh, it, if it is said, at the end of a prayer. So I end this reflection with that, giving praises to our ancestors, the creator of the universe, and saying Ashe, in the, know, in the knowledge that I will be moving forward um, to continue to cultivate myself to be the kind of father that I want to be.
Give thanks, kings and queens. I'm sure this reflection is going to be longer than the previous two because of the subject matter. It's a very important one. Uh, and as always, I look forward to your reflections, um, um, particularly the mandem once again, especially on this one, you know what I mean? Particularly the mandem. But sisters, you're always welcome. Uh, we cannot, um, you know, develop ourselves as men uh, completely divorced and estranged from uh, the women that are around us, you know what I mean? So I look forward to all those reflections right there. And uh, see you again in about a week's time um, where I think I'm going to be going into the science of naming. I think that's the, the next reflection that uh, I wrote. Oh, by the way, before I finish, some of you have been asking to see uh, my son. You want my son to feature in these videos. Yeah, that ain't going to happen for now, yeah? Um, you know what I mean, my G? So, yeah, because, especially because I, we haven't had the naming ceremony yet. Um, and so I'm being, I'm not plastering my son over the social media anytime soon. Um, so, you know, yeah, let's leave that out there for now. Um, but stay tuned. Like I'm saying he might feature at some point in the, in, in the distant future. Um, but also, um, some of you have been asking to see Nahanda, yes, um, in some of these videos as well. And we can probably negotiate that, you know what I mean? So stay tuned for that. We'll look into um, that particular science right there, you know what I mean? So once again, see you in about a week's time. I give thanks. Kuzai Muzi Mukuru. Tenda Mwadi. Ashe.